Hey y'all and welcome to Sniper Homestead. I'm Zach and today we are talking about something very, very serious that everyone needs to be very aware about. So recently over this past week, the FDA has officially approved Upside Foods, which is a co corporation company, to start selling synthetic or cultured foods. Now, we've talked a lot, right, about lab-made food, synthetic food, synthetic medicine, all the different stuff that is not farm-grown food. But do you truly understand what it means and why it's a problem? I'm here to tell you. So let's first start off by what is cultured food? What is that? What is lab made food consist of? So I did a lot of research on this and I was getting a lot of the information straight from Upside Foods and then also the FDA because they're the ones that approved it. Just gathering information, not believing things, but gathering. So what is cultured food? Cultured food is when they take a living cell, so they're taking a cell from a living organism and they're recreating that into meat or what they're calling meat. So what that looks like is what Upside Foods said they did for their chicken is they took the cell out of a fertilized egg, used that cell to then feed it with what they're calling growth media, which is basically salts and sugars and different nutrients to make that cell then multiply into meat. But it doesn't, it's not an animal. So you need to remember, it's not forming chicken breasts. It's not forming chicken wings. It's forming mush, a whole bunch of mush and what looks like a big brewing container. So something that if you're in our Appalachian area, like a moonshine mash container, um, if you're kind of beer breweries around you, what a beer brewer would have with all their hops in there that are sitting there fermenting, that is where the meat is being created. So it's taken from a cell. Other things they can take it from is from the skin of an animal. They can take it directly from the meat. They're getting these cells out of animals. They actually even said they've even done it out of slaughtered animals. Recently slaughtered animals, they've taken that, that cell from them as well. All interesting science stuff. So this idea isn't something new. It isn't something that's completely new for our areas. If you think about it, there has been plant-based meat that is out there. They call them Beyond Burgers and different stuff like that. The reason those aren't so eye-catching and disturbing is because it is coming from a plant that they're just adding a bunch of different ingredients in to try to make it taste as close to a burger as possible. But it is plant-based, so they're getting the plants and it is what it is. That's however they want to look at it. This is actually coming from a living organism. It is a cell that is being pulled out of it, and it is trying to reproduce actual meat. And they're saying it's happening. They're saying it has the nutrients that regular meat would have. One thing that they're highlighting is saying that this meat will actually have less contamination, meaning less salmonella potential, E. coli potential, because it is being created in a controlled environment with what they're saying is the best cells possible. They're saying that they're verifying these cells and that these cells do not have any known pathogens that are in it, and it's gonna create really clean meat. Two things that kind of crossed my mind with that scenario. One, if it is completely clean meat, let's, say, let's just say what they're saying is accurate. If it is 100% has nothing in it, that's not good for you. That is not good for our bodies to not be challenged with some degree of pathogens or different bacteria that's on it. It's the old saying, right? Let your kids get dirty because that's how they build their immune system. Well, our body's immune system is going to go down if, we, if it never has to fight anything, meaning we're gonna be more susceptible and other illnesses will be more dangerous because our bodies will not be able to fight it off. So if it did become this extremely popular thing and that's where we saw all of our food come from, we are lowering our immune systems by never being addressed with any kind of, I don't wanna say disease, but any kind of thing that's out there that our body has to fight and work through. Secondly, I don't believe them. I don't believe them that it's gonna be lower salmonella chances, lower E. coli chances. I don't, I don't see that happening because you're basically fermenting salmonella in a container and then you're going to form it in to what looks like a chicken breast. There is this a lot of moving parts and a lot of raw meat that is having air contamination. So even if you're in this factory and you're calling it 100% clean, stainless steel, all this different stuff, there are airborne pathogens that will be landing on this mush at some point throughout it. And what we all know with raw meat is it doesn't need, it needs to be refrigerated, right? It can't be just sitting out very quickly or very long 
without stuff landing on it. So what's the process of cleaning that up? What's the process of making sure that this clean cell never has access to any of these pathogens? So in my opinion, it appears either equal or more chance of some of these terrible harmful diseases like E. coli and salmonella that are gonna be crossed amongst different restaurants and grocery stores. So when I was reading up on it, I was really curious on what does it look like? Like what does it look like? And it literally is mush. Have y'all ever seen the McDonald's video of their chicken nuggets and how, what that looks like before it's fried? It's like this machine and it's just shooting out what kind of looks like like pink ice cream, but they're calling that the meat, the meat that's there. The thing about all of that is we know that that meat isn't real. We know that is not pure 100% white chicken meat that's gonna be in these chicken nuggets. We know a lot of these fast food restaurants are using not meat. Like, I mean, I worked at Taco Bell a lot of my life and you should have seen the stuff that was just in these baggies that we just dropped in hot water and that's what we're eating in our tacos. It doesn't look like meat at the beginning. It looks like mush. So we know this stuff is happening. Well, this lab meat that is saying that it is just like regular meat, what does it look like? It's mush. It is strictly mush that is just formed into whatever shape that they want to form it into. And so first off, that is just unappealing. That is unappealing to the eye. It's unappealing to even think about that that's what you're eating because that's what it is. It is just mush because they're literally just creating meat. Like they're just creating the tissue and the meat and not everything else that comes with an animal. So is it very scientific? Absolutely. There's some science that's going on behind this. Is it something that I would ever eat? Absolutely not. And that's just from the appealing part, not for the other stuff I'm about to tell you. On Upside Foods website, they have two major things that they're promoting on why they are doing this and why people should buy it. One, no animal had to be slaughtered to create this meat. However, they are extracting cells from animals, but okay, they're living. That, that are, there's no animals that are being slaughtered. And secondly, let me see what that is. It'll cut down on gas emissions, on gas emissions. So again, like we've talked in previous videos, they're still blaming animal poo for gas emissions. Not the concrete, not the factories, none of that. They're still blaming animals as the cause for all the gas emissions that are going out to the atmosphere. So I did a little research on that because it's hard to believe because I, and you know, Factories produce a lot of emissions into our atmosphere that are causing these greenhouse effects and global warming or whatever they're saying. All the stuff that they're saying is happening has a blend of different stuff that's causing it. So UC Davis did a study on Upside Foods factory and their prediction is that that factory will produce four to 25 times more gas emissions than any living animal on a farm that would produce the same amount of meat. So one of their top reasons of doing this has already been debunked before they've even gotten into heavy production. It's all lies and it's always going to be all lies. And for the first piece about slaughtering, I also started thinking about what's their angle with that? What is their angle on saying no animals have to be slaughtered? Because at least in my research, more people are more worried about how these animals are being raised than the actual slaughtering part. Don't get me wrong, it's not pretty, it's not fun but it's the conditions that our meat animals are having to live in and these massive factories is a problem. The living conditions are pretty terrible, but they're promoting on saying no animal has to be slaughtered. So the first thing that pops in my head, because we get it a lot here on this channel, since we do raise our own meat animals, is one, PETA, you know, they're gonna make PETA happy. And secondly, I was like, are they trying to approach vegetarians? And I was like, maybe, because in the articles I was reading, it said that their hope is that vegetarians may try this since no animal had to be slaughtered. But it is meat. It is coming from an animal. So it feels like a really, really bad marketing position in my eyes. Because if you're going to be vegetarian, you're going to be vegetarian. You're not looking for meat to eat just because it was taken from a cell and it was grown into a lab and had cells multiply and multiply and multiply until it turned into this mush thing that then we formed into what we're calling chicken and serving it out. So there are two top things, seems like one, bad marketing, and two, uh, something they're stating that has already been debunked by studies by other scientists outside of them. So it makes me wonder why and how this is ever going to take off. Because at first I had fear that it was. But now I'm having more confidence on the solution of us people 
to be able to take this down and make sure it's not happening so we can address some more of the real problems. So I did more studies about how much this costs because that, with anything, the cost is what really fuels anything that succeeds, right? So being a bunch of scientists extracting cells, multiplying these cells, basically cloning just the meat of animals, which is just, ugh, it costs $17 per pound at this moment to produce the meat, the whatever, the lab stuff, $17 a pound to produce it. So then if I'd actually hit a grocery store, do you know how much that would cost us? A lot more than $17. The inflation and their profits they would need would probably be 40 to $50 a pound. And they would probably want a more profit to loss ratio. So obviously right there, it's not sustainable. They're blaming it primarily on their growth media. I don't know why that is the term that they're using for the food that is making these cells grow and multiply, but they're calling it growth media. So they're right now they're using sugars and uh, salts and different other nutrient ingredients that they're putting in this thing to make it expand out, to make it grow. Well, to get that price down, what they're gonna do before it hits those grocery stores are start getting really, really terrible ingredients that are extremely cheap for them to get that will make these cells grow. So they might've had a good start right now on saying, hey, this is pretty close, but they're gonna be switching to different ingredients that are 100% unhealthy and probably just chemicals. It'll probably just be chemicals because those are cheaper to get your hands on that are just gonna make these things grow. So they're getting it from a live cell and then they're gonna make it grow by, by non-food, by non-nutrients, where right now our animals are growing from grass, they're gonna be probably putting chemicals in these things to make them expand and grow out because that's cheaper. They can't go to market selling 40 to $50 a pound, and they know that, so they're already figuring out ways to get around it. If I came up with that idea, they probably already got it going on. I think my absolute favorite part, turkeys. My absolute favorite part about all this is they're calling it sustainable. The most sustainable meat we will ever see. What? The reason is they have these cell banks. They have these cells that they get and they start multiplying out and then they separate them out and stop their growth. So they have this huge bank of cells that they can just start putting into these massive mash barrels to grow out and be making thousands and thousands of pounds of meat. Okay, it's not sustainable. That is not sustainable because one, one number reason that we talked about in a previous video, electricity. What do you think is keeping these cells alive? Refrigeration. What do you think is keeping the refrigeration on? The power. And then they probably have backup generators that are going through there. Well, the backup generators need gas. And then the gas is going away because we have electrical cars that everybody's pushing to to try to get away from gas. Well, the electrical cars are starting to overload the grid because it's too much electric that's being used. And then boom, your power's off, Mr. Factory. Your one factory that is supposed to produce all the meat, all the chicken meat for the entire country, you go down one time, you have a fire one time, you're completely done. There is no more meat for anybody. That's not sustainability. Sustainability is having a male and a female that breed, that continue to breed, that continue to grow the flock, that continues to give you food. Because if one set of animals go down, you mitigate the issue, move the animals, make sure there's no disease on that pasture, and then regrow. But as long as you keep two, you're always gonna be good. That's why it's good to not put all your money and all your eggs in one basket, as we all know. That's what they're doing. That is why this will never be sustainable and natural farming always will be. So when I officially heard the FDA like did what we all knew was gonna happen with this synthetic cultured food in labs, I was worried. I thought this was gonna be a massive movement that was going to start taking over our grocery stores, which they, by the way, it's only in restaurants right now. They are projected to be in grocery stores by 2028. So keep watching on this. And I'm going to keep paying attention to, to see what it is that they're changing to get that price down. Cause I guarantee it's not going to be anything good that, for human beings. It's just going to be good for their pocketbooks. So they're planning on getting this into grocery stores by 2028. At this time, it is one company, Upside Foods, that is producing this meat. There are others that are trying to get FDA approved, but we have one company at this time to worry about. We had something similar happen in Kentucky. That it was this new company. They were doing something with plants. I didn't pay attention to it to a whole lot. It was these massive greenhouses of some form. And I don't know the I don't know the information enough to do it, but it was like a new scientific way to grow vegetables. And even our governor signed in on it. It was a private company. 
Um, and they were basically saying that they were going to be able to produce all of these veggies for the entire world and make Kentucky all kinds of money and bring all kinds of revenue and jobs in here. Um, and it, it sounded iffy because it sounded like some kind of cell organism thing instead of doing it with seeds. It was just, it was kind of off-putting at first, but their plan was to grow all this food. Well, that was like two years ago, maybe a couple years more, but not too much. That company has now gone bankrupt. They are in the hole so far. Um, it is not working because I think that should have been a lesson learned. People don't want that food. Just like how us at a very small level will wait for the homegrown tomato in the yard rather than what we're all call a hothouse tomato because even that isn't a locally natural grown tomato, but it's not in the elements. It's something about the elements that give us that fresh taste, right? So having that just didn't work out and it went out of business. So that got me hopes with this. This company, Upside Foods, is one company right now. Now they're smart. They're focusing on California to start. That's where their company is and that's where the restaurants that are gonna be serving this food to start. So they're probably gonna have an immediate tick up. Their response is probably gonna be pretty good in these California restaurants because that's where they try all this crazy stuff. It's a, it's a wonder anyone's still living in California with the amount of stuff that they've put in their bodies. But anyways, that's a different fact. Once they start trying to venture out to the rest of the country, as long as we say no, and it's pretty easy to, because my goodness, we, we don't even want GMO stuff. We don't want this, that's all I gotta say. So my prediction is that as long as we say no and we don't participate, we don't buy this stuff, we don't get it, this company will shut down. It is not a government facility. It is probably a facility that is receiving government funds because almost every primary private company is in some form or fashion. As long as we say no, they're gonna have debts that they're not gonna be able to pay back and this will go away. Now there will be more that come, but they're going to follow trends because the one thing about it is, it's all about the money. If they're not making the money, we can say goodbye to synthetic and cultured meat. So I'm telling you right now, this isn't the first, this isn't the last one that's trying to kill our farms and they're trying to blame the animals like we always know, which is so silly. Does that little turkeys over there that have been interrupting this entire video look like they're doing anything that's gonna harm this, this planet? No more than we are and we're doing worse. And that's the whole thing that's going on here. We're trying to blame something else again and we're not blaming the human problem um, by building more factories. Factories are gonna create more emissions than any kind of livestock animals will there is. So what you need to do is make sure that you're not buying this stuff. Don't buy it, don't fall into it, don't even try it. It seriously, y'all, research it, it grosses you out. It grosses you out more than any slaughterhouse will ever do. They, it's molded, it's molded meat. It's like tofu meat, but at least tofu, we know what it is. Ugh, this is gross. So we're just gonna say no, we're not gonna do it, and we're gonna keep our eyes open on what the next thing that's coming because there's always gonna be a next thing. But what we can do in the meantime is make sure that we have our properties and families lined up for themselves. We need to make sure that we're growing our own meat. If we eat meat, we need to make sure that we're growing our own plants. If we're eating vegetables, we need to make sure that we're preserving and putting food back because there is always that chance that some kind of government agency can get involved and shut down other farms and force us this way. So if you're still relying on a grocery store, they could turn their head and force that to be the only meat that's there. I'm hoping that we can catch this ahead of time, just like we did with the vaccine, because I still count that as a win. We definitely won. They can definitely try, but it's up to us on saying no and making sure that we beat their money. If they get enough money to get to their next step of their agenda, because it's, all, it's always next steps. Right now, it's just trying to get people to eat it and buy it. As long as we can stay away from that, it'll die and never reach that second step, which I fear would be much worse than what the first one is. So you all keep your eyes out, keep your ears open, make sure that you're researching, make sure that you're learning and doing the proper steps and make sure you're talking about it, right? Talk about the stuff that we talked about in this video on why it's not good. That way your neighbors and your friends and your cousins, they're all like, oh yeah, I remember Jimmy telling me about that and it doesn't sound like it's gonna be very good because people aren't going to do their own research, but they love talking to one another about the stuff they're hearing from each other. That's the power and the way that we can spread the word to say no and make sure that we're fighting these companies that are trying to take down small farmers and homesteaders and larger farms and large, larger homesteads. Let's stay together. Let's say no to this crap meat or whatever it is, this mush stuff. And let's keep focused on our own farms. Let's get our own animals out there. And y'all have a good day. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye.